I feel like editing is kind of like peanut butter to my oatmeal in the morning. I can eat my oatmeal with the fruits and the nuts and it's good, it's good. But with the peanut butter, it's like my world changes. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today, as the video title suggests, I will be talking about how to make stunning, beautiful photos of yourself. Now, a quick disclaimer, I am not a photographer, I'm not a model, however, I do love modeling and I do look at different photographers and models for inspiration. I love design, I love art, I love the whole process of making a photo. I thought it might be fun if I shared how I make my own photos, plus give you some tips how to find your best poses and your best setting for your desired aesthetics. I think it would give more value to you if you would be encouraged to find what looks best for your body, right? And what kind of setting inspires you. So I will try to do that in this video. Let's start with the first tip, and that is to get to know your body and get to know your angles, your moves, your curves, everything. For you to be confident when you take a photo or to even look good, you need to study yourself. You need to literally practice in front of a mirror. You know, turn your head, turn your body to different kind of poses and study what makes you look good. I think it's very important to understand that posing is a skill, it is not a talent. I don't believe that actually anything in life is particularly a talent. We get good at things by practicing, right? Again, I don't consider myself a professional. I'm just sharing kind of my insights. Models are good at posing because that's what they do every single day, sometimes, you know, 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day. They've gotten really good at it. I don't think that what makes a good picture good is, you know, looking like a supermodel. It's how you work with what you have. And we all can work with different details of our bodies. Be in front of a mirror, practice, uh, study what you like, which side of the face you like, and so on and so forth. If I am posing and I need to turn, if I can choose, I will much more likely choose my left side than my right side. I think it's because I can lift my left eyebrow, but I can't lift my right one. And I do this automatically, really. I don't even think about it. But if I am posing, I automatically lift my left eyebrow. So I'll show you. When I'm just normal, this is my face, and I will lift. <laughs> I can't pose when I'm filming, but you get the idea. So what this does, it kind of lengthens my face and gives this kind of a lifted appearance. You can do the same thing with your face. Just stand in front of a mirror and just see which side you like better. And I mean, it could be that you have a very symmetrical face and you like both sides. Great for you. I don't have a symmetrical face and that's why when posing, I prefer this side. Beautiful sunset tonight just stunning. Then when it comes to my body, I really like to work with my hips. I do this a lot in photos. If you look through my Instagram, you will see that. I work with that natural kind of curve I have on the lower part of my body. So just play with the moves that you're creating in front of the mirror. Uh, be silly if you wanna be silly, doesn't matter. Try to really not copy posing, but instead taking that as an inspiration and then seeing if that fits you and uh, if it feels natural to you. The second tip is posture, curves, and lines. This is my favorite point and I am very happy to be talking about this because I really believe that in photos, everything is about curving, about lines, about sharpness, about softness, and if you understand those things, you have kind of, you're more in control in what you're doing. For example, a good posture makes you look more sharp, more confident. A curved back will give a completely different tone to the picture. I don't necessarily believe, and I've heard this a lot, that like if your back is curved, it doesn't look good. Again, there are many, many pictures in modeling and professional photo shoots where models are curved and it looks really good. So this is really about finding what kind of a tone you wanna to give to the picture. I've played with both, but most of the time, if you're thinking about not artsy photos, but just regular photos, obviously a good posture goes a long way. If you're 
shoulders are back if your jaw is kind of sharp and forward it just again it creates more lines it gives more structure I'm going to put up different pictures so you can kind of see what I'm talking about but I play a lot with creating a line creating a length and accentuating the curves that I was talking about earlier I often put my hands up um, it kind of lengthens my body I will kind of put my foot forward that also not only lengthens my body but also accentuates that curve that I like. If you go through my pictures you will see a common pattern so I'm not that original I just kind of know what I like and I repeat it all the time. It's really about playing with what you want to accentuate in that specific photo sun came out of nowhere we're just gonna have to work with it so for example in the chair photo I wanted a lot of simplicity and because I'm already kind of curved you know my head is against my knee by putting that leg out it kind of lengthens the picture with the wall photo again the same thing my arms are up again I'm creating that length I'm creating that dreaminess there's also a very important aspect of editing and colors which I will talk about later but just by working with my body and creating that curve and line I'm accentuating what I want to accentuate the third point is background and elements think about what inspires you what do you find beautiful pretty and what do you want to accentuate and where do you want to draw focus for me the main two things I mean I do different sort of photos but mostly um, my background will be either very basic minimalistic white or nature one of my favorite pictures is me in all white against a white wall because it's white and it's minimalistic it draws attention to the subject which is me again I'm accentuating my body shape my curves but I'm leaving it minimalistic and my hands again are up because I'm lengthening the body. I find that to be kind of my one of go-to poses. It's simple, it's minimalistic, but I'm creating that look and that aesthetic that I want. If the background is the subject as in the picture that I will show you, then I have to be very minimalistic and kind of nude even maybe. Now, again, if you don't like nudity, obviously you don't have to do it. I certainly like <laughs> nudity in photos. I think it looks amazing. With this photo, I chose to kind of be almost naked and with a book. This post was about books, so it kind of suited the whole idea. And because I was talking about a reading and creativity, the whole background of the tree was more important of course there's still me of course there's the shape and the curve but the whole idea of the picture is not to be necessarily drawn just at me but the aesthetic of the tree and the grain think about what kind of a person you are if you're eccentric and you like a lot of colors you probably like your photos to be colorful with a lot of things in the background if you want to create photos that you enjoy you have to understand what you even like what kind of a background you like you will feel more confident if you're posing at a background that you just love you're excited about you feel like you fit in there the fourth point is lighting now if you're shooting inside it doesn't really matter at what time of the day you're shooting because we all have different lighting systems at our homes. If you're a creator or YouTuber, you probably have some sort of a lighting system in your home. However, there's still room to play. I did a photo shoot a year and a half ago. It was very spontaneous. It was a Sunday, I still remember it. And I saw this beautiful sun coming through my window and I just got inspired to play with it and do different kind of lighting photos. But again, it does doesn't matter at what time of the day you're shooting if you're shooting inside as long as you have enough light coming in because you have the control to do what you want if you're shooting outside myself I've found that the best time to shoot is when the Sun is low in the sky so not during like 12 1 2 p.m. when the Sun is high but let's say in the morning or late evening what that does is the shadows are much much more softer and the whole like length your angles or more flattering they look more flattering obviously you can shoot photos at any time of the day I shoot photos sometimes in direct sunlight as well I've just found that somehow when the Sun is low everything looks more flattering and more soft there's a reason why people call it the golden hour I don't think it's just because of the Sun I think it's because just everything looks more flattering 
And the final tip on how to make beautiful stunning photos of yourself is to learn how to edit. If you're not used to editing, oh, and by the way, I'm not talking about Photoshopping yourself or your body. I'm talking about the overall picture editing. So the lighting, the colors, if you're not used to it, it's something you might want to look into. It can really, really make a normal photo look amazing. I feel like editing is kind of like peanut butter to my oatmeal in the morning. It might not make sense to you, but for me, I can eat my oatmeal with the fruits and the nuts and it's good. It's good. But with the peanut butter, it's like my world changes. That's what editing, I think, does to your pictures. It just brings out what already is there, what is good there, and just kind of accentuates it even more. I'll actually show you an example. The photo that I was talking about before with the French braid and all white. I'll show you a before and after. Basically, this photo was taken when me and Gus just moved into our apartment and everything was still a mess and there were different furniture around and just the walls were not done, the floor was not done. But I still wanted to create that photo and I wanted everything to be white. Now I have white walls, but I didn't at the time, so I kind of made it look the way that I want. It's not about being professional in any area. If you look at the videos that I talk about how to have a healthy relationship with food or how to be more grateful or how to now make more stunning photos, I'm not an expert in any of those fields. I just have a big passion for these areas, so I learn as much as I can and I do the best as I can. And I want to inspire you to do the same. If this topic is interesting to you and if you want to make better photos of yourself and if you want to pose but you're just kind of shy and you feel like, oh, you can't do it, you can, you can. It's all about understanding what you've got and working with colors and working with shapes and you can definitely create the notion that you want. It just kind of takes a little bit of practice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video brought some sort of a value to you and maybe inspired you to go and play with your camera and make silly faces or just kind of experiment with your body and what it can do. I really think that photography and modeling is art, but it's also about just playing and understanding what looks good and what you like and what makes you feel good. I really truly believe that it's not about how you look, it's about what you can do with how you look, if that makes sense. If you are new to my channel, consider subscribing. I talk all about growth and happiness and fulfillment and lifestyle and food and basically anything and everything that inspires me and makes me feel happy and that I feel like could make you happy. You can also leave me a like or a comment that would help my channel a lot. Thanks again for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.